most of the time, you know, someone is coming to Feldenkrais and they don't actually necessarily even know what it is that I do. It's too new. It's not something that's in the zeitgeist as being really like, oh, I know what Feldenkrais is. And so people have come to me because someone's recommended it, but that doesn't mean they know what on earth they've signed up for. They're desperate. So I really have to explain to them, look, there's a, there's a whole series of things we can do together. I can, I can talk to you about your nervous system. I can help you understand how we could bring that back into rhythm. We can do some breath work or we can do some gentle movement that will actually calm your nervous system. Um, and breath is a really interesting one. Sometimes um, breath is equally uh, a, a sort of re-traumatizing thing. You know, some people go, oh, no, no, I can't, I, we can't focus on breath. And it's like, great, we'll never focus on breathing, you know. So I'm, I'm kind of really kind of, a, again, attuning through conversation to this person. And, if, and then I say, you know, and, some, and, and I can use my hands. I can put my hands on your feet, on your shoulders. And, you know, if I say that, do you feel like the, listening to that you go oh yeah that's what I'm that's what I want or does actually that immediately make you feel cautious or even anxious and so again I say and the great thing is I never have to touch you you can come to Feldenkrais and never be touched because there's we have so many tools Cynthia I can teach them to do their little bell hand. I can teach them to touch themselves. They might not want to touch themselves, but I can do gentle swaying or folding movements. I can do all of those little um, sort of patterning movements that are, that are there with the eyes or, you know, w rolling the pelvis, all kinds of things. And they will have a physiological and then reciprocal psychological shift. So absolutely. I think we've got to be really mindful that touch can excite or touch can calm. And and for each of us we have to honor I'm getting too excited by this or I'm get, or this is kind of dulling me and what do I need to do? So definitely it's something that is um yeah, really um important to remember. I've got um clients who have various neurological conditions and I love them um, and children for this reason that if I touch an area that they don't want me to touch, they just push me away. It's like go away. You know, get off that part of my body. And, and, I, and I, I sometimes tell my clients that and I say, you know, you're a bit too well behaved now. So you might let me touch an area and then, you know, really you're not happy. But, you know, just be like my cerebral palsy clients and just kick me off. You know, just push me away because, you know, I'm here to meet your needs and, and they might change in the moment. And if you want to roll on to one side or, you know, we're really just trying to, as you say, attune to that client. So... Um, what I might go on to here is a kind of conversation that sort of flows on from this, which is a lot of time when we go to see medical practitioners, um, doctors and nurses and various you know people who in theory are there to help us, we can be in a conflict with consent. I've got a lot of clients who come because of IVF or birth trauma. And what it often is, is because of these, these consent or these boundaries of comfort have really been um, overridden. Now, they're overridden because of safety in terms of the, the doctor or the person there is deeming that what needs to happen um, needs to happen. But also, I think they're being overridden because we're still in our infancy and in working out how to be the best practitioners that we can be. And, it, you know, doctors are working out that, that there does need to be a bedside manner. There does need to be conversations of consent and these are beautifully coming into these kinds of arenas slowly more and more. Um, but a lot of time people are in those experiences and they feel like they go, oh, I'm not comfortable with this, but they don't feel like they're allowed to say it or they say it, but they get overridden. And if we take kind of trauma experiences on a bigger scale, so we look at them more broadly, trauma... Um, interferes with our capacity to recognize comfort, to recognize safety, and to recognize when we don't want to do something. 